Howdy y'all, I'm Anna with Always Right, and in today's author tube video, I'm going to be sharing with you my recent book purchases. Now, I have quite a few. I've purchased them at my local thrift store, I've purchased them at a used bookstore, I've purchased some at Walmart even, and then of course, I've purchased some from Barnes & Noble. I've been trying to stay away from Amazon because he's already been to space. He doesn't need any more of my money. So that's how this bar down here is gonna be broken down really, is like the source of the book. Now, in this video, I'm gonna try to give you a summary of the book the best that I understand it, the best that I could gleam from either like the front flap or the back cover. Now, some of these I did do a little bit more research into because I had a like inkling or they just didn't have a cover period. They were just kind of as is, no script on them. So yeah, I cheated a little on some of them, but I've tried to stay away from some spoilers. Now, y'all probably haven't noticed this, but I noticed it when I sat down to record and that is, is I can always tell when I get into like a reading slump because I will go out and I will buy books. <laughs> Without much further ado, let's get into the books. The first section I'm gonna go over are the thrift store books I bought. I bought oh, most of these, don't fall on me. <laughs> I bought most of these for like 50 or 25 cents each and I'm really excited about like two of them in particular. Most of these books, yes, I acknowledge I won't ever read. Um, and that's okay with me. I also like to collect books just to kind of have as an option. The first of my thrift store finds is Ruth Ware's The Death of Mrs. Westaway. This was published in 2018. This is the book that Ruth Ware published right after The Lion Game. The reason I mentioned The Lion Game is because that's one of the Ruth Ware books that I've read. I know that they recently had a book that was like a green chandelier. A uh, book, I don't remember the name of it, but this one came before that one, needless to say. Now this one is definitely a thriller, mystery, suspense, novel. Spoilers, it's Ruth Ware. I know, what a surprise. And this follows a young English woman that is invited to the will reading of her grandmother who died like 20 years prior. So it seems interesting, there's a lot of people there, there's the mystery element like, mm, but who's really dead? It sounds very, very interesting. I don't know how soon I will get onto this. I don't even know if I'm going to read the physical book for this or if I'm just going to go on to Libby and be like, good enough. <laughs> the next book is Good Behavior by Molly Keene, introduced by Maggie O'Farrell. Now, this is not the book that I thought it was. I thought this is the book that inspired the movie where the lady boils the bunny. Uh, the bunnies made me think it, and the title sound like vaguely close enough, and I was just like, yeah, sure. But I went to the good Google, and Google's description is uh, that this tells a story of Irish society in the early 20th century, narrated by the daughter of the St. Charles family. Uh, nothing is as it seems. A cold mother, a gay brother, and a similarly inclined love interest, all unseen or excused by the society focused upon good behavior. It sounds really cute. I really just bought it because the bunnies. I'm a simple woman. I buy a book if it has like a really aesthetic design. She may just be like a bookshelf queen. She may not be like a reading queen. Uh, this was published in 1981, so I may read through this. This is a rather short book. This is only about 291 pages, so she's not like that threatening, but she's definitely not that high up on my list. Like I said, I bought her because she was really pretty. Next up is J.K. Rowling's Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the original screenplay, and I bought this as an aesthetic queen, as a very cheap aesthetic queen. I have no shame in buying this because I got it from the thrift store because that's the section we're in. I paid 50 cents for this and JK Rowling didn't get a cent of it. So I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> So this is like the script for the movie, in theory. I didn't really look into it. I didn't really care because I just thought it was really, really pretty. I just love the gold foil on the navy. Oh, yes. So another book that I bought just to be kind of pretty. Oh, well. Next up is The White Bone by Barbara Gowdy. This is not an aesthetic queen. I think, I think this is very attractive. 
naturally, I mean, it caught my eye enough for me to add it to my cart. Who's a weedle weedle elephant from here on here? Uh, but she is well, well loved and well, well read. I had no idea really what this was about. All I knew is that I'd seen this at my thrift store quite a few times. I think they had like two copies of it at the time. This was the pretty copy. And it made me go, dang, to have two copies of the same book and they both be like intensely read, it must be a good book. So I bought it. And evidently this follows like a few elephant families. There's some family trees here in the beginning of the book that I'm very intrigued about. It's kind of like different herds. They all have different naming schemes. That's fascinating to me. It's about elephants. I don't know much more about it than that. I imagine I will probably cry reading this as any good person should. This is definitely high up on my TBR and it's partially because yes, I was like an avid Warrior Cats reader. So I'm very curious to see how this kind of like self-contained, in theory, novel goes about animals. And it's like about elephants. Next up is The Pilot's Wife by Anita Shreve. This is an Oprah's book club book. And yes, Anita Shreve, if you watch like my book hauls, she may sound like really familiar and you may be going like, where have I heard that? I know I've heard it. She's the author that I have the arc of for the stars are fire that I found at the exact same thrift store. No, this is not an arc. I really wish it was, but it's the same author. And a lot of the reviews for the stars are fire mentioned the pilot's wife. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, dang, the pilot's wife has got to be like a decent book for most of the reviews of this to mention this. So I bought it. I'm probably going to read this one, The Pilot's Wife, before The Stars Are Fire. So The Pilot's Wife follows a pilot's wife and she gets that dreaded knock on her door at midnight that her husband has been in a plane accident, a plane wreck. And actually the plane exploded and uh, he kind of had like a secret double life. So she's going to discover more about him. It's really good at women's lit and I'm very excited to read it. And the last thrift store book I have is The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weisberger. The Devil Wears Prada follows small town girl Andrea as she becomes the assistant to the devil that wears Prada. And the devil that wears Prada is the equivalency to like Vogue magazine's editor. I know for a fact that I have this audiobook kind of on my TBR shelf for Libby. So I will probably listen, read along, and I'm very excited about it. I've absolutely adored the movie since it came out, and I knew it was based on a book. I know that my mother owned the book, but I'm thinking that if it's anything like the movie, it's going to be a book <laughs> I'm going to reread quite a bit, and it would be annoying for me to constantly borrow it from my mother. So I went and got my own copy. So this is a very, very healthy stack of books from the thrift store. I have one that's like an instant high TBR read, AKA like the white bone. And then I have some that are like, if I get in another snag, I can hopefully pull myself out of it and like enjoy reading again. Next up are my Walmart books and there's like half as many, there's only three. So this will be a pretty quick section. Let's start off with the biggest. This is Hawk by James Patterson and Gabrielle Charbonnet. And this follows the Maxim Ride series that has like eight books in it. Yes, I looked into reading those before this. They're 10 hours each on audiobook and I just went, that's two weeks of like solid work. I would rather just guess and assume and hope. <laughs> so Hawk is set in the same apocalyptic world as Maximum Ride. Uh, so I'm just gonna read the flap copy for this because it's very, very concise, very quick. And it's also why I decided to purchase the book. Where is Maximum Ride? 10 years ago, a girl with wings fought to save the world, but then she disappeared. Now she's just a fading legend, remembered only in stories. 
Hawk doesn't know her real name. She doesn't know who her family is or where they went. The only thing she remembers is that she was told to wait on a specific street corner at a specific time until her parents came back for her. She stays under the radar to survive until a destiny that's perilously close to maximum rides forces her to take flight. Someone is coming for her, but it's not a rescue mission. It's an execution. It just sounded really interesting. This is kind of more like YA, like older YA fiction. And I was very intrigued by it. And then of course the back says, the apocalypse is over, welcome to the new world. And I am seriously a sucker for like post-apocalyptic books. Can't stand zombies, don't like zombie apocalypse books. But like these, I'm curious about. I have many questions. Next up is a serious outlier for me. <laughs> And that is upside down magic, sticks and stones. Look how tiny it is. Look how tiny it is. Like, 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 here's the Hawk book. Here's this one. She's teeny tiny and she's the second one in the series. And I'm really good at buying the second one in a series. What can I say? This is my fifth second book in a series that I purchased this year without having read the first one. Uh, okay. The good news is, is that I did check Libby and it does have the first one on Libby for free as an audiobook. So I'm probably going to listen to the audiobook and then do this if I'm really running like close to not hitting my book count. Yeah, I cheat a little on my book count, spoilers, and I sometimes will read like a very kitty book. A <laughs> kitty book. But the premise of this series because I don't know the specific plot for this one and I think if I gave away like the plot for this one it would ruin like the plot for the first one. But the premise for this series is that magic exists and there's like seven or eight types of magic that exist in the world. It's like there's flyers, there's people that can pull stuff to them, there's people that can turn into animals, like you get where I'm going. And now upside down magic refers to the type of magicians, the type of kids that are born with magic that does not meet like the standard for that type of magic. AKA like for animal transformers, they can turn into a kitten. But for the main character here, at least she was in like the movie I saw on Disney Plus, she can't stay as an animal. She goes as like hybrid animals and it's really interesting. So I watched the movie and I loved the movie, and so I was just like, yeah, I'm going to listen to the first one and then read the second one and be happy with my life. So that's why she's here, is I just needed some joy in my life. And the last Walmart book purchase is Ninth House by Leah Barduga. This is actually a book I added to my Goodreads TBR when it first was like proposed. This is before I knew she did like Shadow and Bone, like Six of Crows, before I knew that she was the author that did all those. I just heard this concept and I was just like, wait, I really like that. And yeah, she's thin. She is a mass market paperback that I found at Walmart because I love, love, love Barnes and Noble. I love supporting my local Barnes and Noble. Spoilers, I don't have any like indie bookstores within 56 or 70 miles of me. So Barnes and Noble is it. But uh, I know that Barnes and Noble has this as like a biggin, like a biggin paperback, not a mass market paperback. And Walmart has the mass market paperback. The cover price is $9.99, which is like eight or $9 cheaper than the Barnes and Noble, like normal paperback that I saw there. So that's why I bought it. Ninth House is basically about a Yale freshman that is like inducted into the secret society or she's supposed to expose the secret society and I've really been wanting to read it but I didn't want to pay like 20 bucks for this for some reason. I have no valid reason other than I was just like, nah, I don't really want to buy that. So instead I paid like 8.50 or something. <laughs> I am excited to read this. This is not at the top of my list currently. I'm planning on reading at least like Six of Crows before I read this, but this is definitely a I'm gonna read it book. Actually, all three of my Walmart books are I'm gonna read them books. So that's all three of my Walmart books. The next section I wanna talk about are the three books that I purchased at the Denton used bookstore. I'll have some footage of it after this video, like at the end of the video, because it is 
absolutely amazing. It's a really cool old opera house that they turned into a giant used bookstore. It's super interesting. It's super cool looking. And oh my God, it was really confusing. I got lost in there like twice. I ended up at a few dead ends and I was just like, where am I? Why am I here? <laughs> but anyway, on to the three books I purchased. The first book I found was The Dragon Queen by William Andrews. I found her when I was looking for the Clan of the Cape Bear section. Yes, I'm still on the hunt for the first one, like in hardback. No, I have not found it yet. <laughs> but The Dragon Queen is the second one in a trilogy by William Andrews, because of course it is. And it kind of has two different stories going on throughout it. The first story, which is kind of like the envelope story, that's what I like to call them, is about an American, like, political person. Like, um, he's an agent, ambassador, whatever. He is going to research why the president of the United States received, like, a dragon comb, and he goes to Korea, and evidently his marriage is in the shitter, or his wife has something that she really wants to talk to him about. I don't know. I didn't read the first one yet. I'm just as confused as you are in the first chapter. <laughs> but that's kind of the envelope story. And like the story within that, the story that he's trying to tell is of the Dragon Queen. She's the last queen of the Korean Empire. It's set in 1866. It's very interesting. I've heard nothing but praise for like the inner story. I didn't really see anything about the envelope story when I was like reading through reviews because I was just like, okay, is she gonna be like a shelf queen or is she gonna be like a red queen, you know? And I think I'm gonna try to read it. I did get through like the first chapter. I know, I'm a heavy reader, what can I say? Um, but I did get through the first chapter, really confused, and I've pretty much just decided to push on and just guess, like I do with most books. The next book is Mermaids in Paradise by Lydia Millet. Now, Lydia Millet may sound familiar to you because I can't stop talking about her in my book calls and my books that I've read and like my favorites series, whatever. Uh, I picked up her children's Bible book that she just released like either early 2021 or late 2020. Absolutely adored it. I purchased like two more of her books. I purchased like a middle published book. So like something in the middle of her writing career. And then I published two of her first books. And I kept eyeing this one when I was like on Amazon looking at used books and I decided not to buy it. I was so excited when I saw this at that used bookstore and I was just like done, I want it, period. Mermaids in Paradise follows a newlywed couple that's on their honeymoon that kind of meet a biologist that claims that they've seen and like discovered mermaids and then there's like these people of course that want to like steal the mermaids and abuse them for cruise ships and of course the married couple can't have that because they're American and yeah that's kind of the story <laughs> it sounds really interesting it's a nice short short read so I'm very excited for it the last book I purchased from the used bookstore is Margaret Atwood's Orcs and Crake now this is not upside down this is upside down there we go there, that's not upside down now. Uh, it's a very, 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 very interesting like cover design and fun fact about this, I discovered this like yesterday. The cover itself is bunnies. It's like psychedelic bunnies. It's so cool. I bought this because in Margaret Atwood's masterclass, she doesn't stop talking about it. This is like a prime example for her. She uses this, I'm pretty sure, like as frequently as she used comparisons and notes from A Handmaiden's Tale. So I was just like, hey, I will buy it. If I ever remember or when I remember, I will buy it. <laughs> And then I went and looked at like the Margaret Atwood section in the used bookstore and they had this and it's like a beautiful addition. I absolutely adore it. It doesn't look like it was like heavily read at all, if ever. It's about 400 pages of content. She's thick and it is speculative fiction because it is Margaret Atwood. And it's kind of like set in a world where there are some humans that all their aggression has just been bred out of them and they're kind of like sheep is the nice way to compare them. 
And then there's like very few, very sparse humans that are there to be kind of the protectors of the sheep human. It's about like the shepherd human and one of the sheep human kind of falling in love. And yes, they are still both human. It's just like their behaviors are very different from each other, not just like their personalities. At least that's what Margaret said it was in her master class. And that is like right up my alley. That sounds so interesting to me, so I got it. That wraps it up for my Den, like Opera House used bookstore, like bit. Here they are, they're pretty. Next up, and I don't think y'all are ready for this, is the Bonds and Noble section. Spoilers for this. I did not intend to buy over half of these books, but I did, and Oh God, the thick one on the bottom. It's got daddy issues because it's just, it's giving me hell right now. It was a pain to carry around Barnes and Noble. Anyway, let's get into <laughs> The first one is The Ranger and Marzana by John Scovron. Now this one, can you guess why I bought it? It's, it's right there staring at you. That's right, a horse. I'm a very simple human. If it's like a signed edition, or if you've got like a horse or like a dragon on it, you instantly have like my attention. And yeah, so this was on an end cap, just kind of staring me down in the fantasy section. And I try to avoid the fantasy section because I buy like bullshit big books like this. And I'm like, Anna, you don't need these in your life. You still have like a 650 page book you're trying to get through. Why are you doing this? Not to mention like the 400 page book that I'm in the very middle of, that I'm like getting down. Why do you do this? But I did it, so here we are. And uh, unfortunately for this book, it's part of a series. I'm not a series fan because usually the second one sucks. Just my opinion. This is basically like a brother sister political drama. And this is Sonia. She is the ranger of Morzana. And she is fighting to right the wrong that is her father's, of course he's the king, his murder by like some imperial soldiers. And her brother, because yeah, I said brother sister drama, her brother is gonna be like one of the strongest sorcerers out there. So she's like the brawn and he's like the brain. Sounds interesting. There's a really pretty horse on the cover. Um, I was like, okay, <laughs> I don't have a better reason. <laughs> that I was like, I really like the horse. The story sounds like good enough, so let's go. Oh my God. I wish I was exaggerating. I wish I could give you like a legit reason outside of a horse of why I bought the book. Moving on to something a little better reasoning is The Beautiful by Renee Ade. Now, Renee Ade, she is the one that wrote the Wrath and the Dawn. She is best known for writing kind of duologies. She doesn't do trilogies. Um, she will sometimes do standalones and I'm pretty sure this is a standalone book. And The Beautiful follows a French dressmaker that escapes to New Orleans and she kind of falls for this guy because of course she does. And uh, there's some murders that start popping up and she like has some strong ideas that it's the really hot guy that she fell for. She doesn't really know, so she stays away from the hot guy and it's got tension. It's Renee Ade, so I was just like, okay. And then the sticker sold me. Buy one, get one 50% off. I was like, uh, the second book of my buy one, get one 50% off is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I have the second one of these and it's signed. Like I said, I'm simple. The second one was signed. Did not know it was a sequel. Boom, there's already a third one out. So hi, how are ya? <laughs> but The Poppy War is basically set in kind of like a fantasy China. There's war, like at the top line here, that's like the eye grabbing one, is peasant, student, soldier, goddess. And I was just like, thanks, I know. But yes, I, this sounds interesting too. <laughs> So yeah, I'm very interested in this, especially since I already have the second one and I could not for the life of me find this anywhere, like cheaper than Barnes and Noble. Like I remember at the time I checked Amazon, I checked their used copies. They didn't have anything that was like cheap, cheap, like, you know, under five bucks. And I was just like, okay, well I'll just buy it new, I guess. And so 
I waited, I waited, and it was worth it. The next book that my mother said, you're buying this, and I went, yes ma'am, is Gossip Girl by Cecily Von Zygazar. That's, that's her name now. So this follows a girl that's like transferred and she's so perfect. She's got this, that, she's great at this, she's great at that. People love her and then it's like, there's a gossip girl, gossip girl, that is like stalking her and is gonna blackmail her probably. I don't know, that's kind of what the back cover says so I'm gonna trust it. Okay, bye. Y'all ready for it? Mm, gotta like stretch for the last book. It's a big one. The last book is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Spoilers for this little guy. I've worked my little tail off this week at work and I have like a few phone calls that I need to make on Friday and the rest of Friday, most of Saturday, and like most of Sunday is going to be dedicated to reading this. Uh, yeah, I have the audiobook for it. It's like 800 pages <laughs> and I did not want to try to like conquer it by myself. So I got the audiobook. I'm gonna try to read it this weekend. I'm gonna do a reading vlog for you. And it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. It had a dragon on the cover. So I was like, oh, that's a pretty book. And then I went to like pull it out of like the Barnes and Noble stack and I was like, e Where's the rest of the book? <laughs> why is this so heavy? <laughs> and that's why. It has uh, been compared to like Game of Thrones. I wonder why. Um, yeah, and it follows a lot of women in this like fantastical country. One's a dragon rider, so we'll get dragons, guys. Game of Thrones, they like blue balled you until the end of the book. And then they're like, oh, here's some dragons. This one doesn't, in theory. <laughs> it better not. <laughs> So yeah, uh, look forward to a reading vlog of this next week. I don't know if it's gonna be like a Friday video or like my Tuesday video. I don't know. All I know is like the audiobook is like 25, 26 hours long. It's a lot, which I say after reading like Blood and Ash in a day, like 24 hours. So I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, that's the last of the Barnes and Noble books. Is it upside down? I don't know. I think it is. Uh, oh God, no! <laughs> These are the Barnes and Noble buys that I had. So there's that, please don't fall. Please don't fall, please don't. Okay, thank y'all so much for watching. I normally post like writing content. This whole like book content is like a flavor. It's like a sprinkle on my channel. I just like to occasionally like every three, four months do just like a book haul. Occasionally I'll do like generalized book reviews so they're not like too specific. It's like, hey, these are my favorites. But yeah, thank y'all so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. I do want to know if y'all have read any of these books, what y'all are even reading right now. What are them youth reading right now? But <laughs> I digress. And as always, let's get writing and reading now. Bye.